Hey guys, let's take a look at some more equations here. We're getting into the meat of coming close to algebra here. So uh, we'll knock through this and we'll, we'll get it here. But let me just, this is, this is, these are called equivalent equations. And the reason they're called equivalent equations is because if, you, if there's an equation, see it, x equals 6, right? Well, if x is equal to 6, then if you put 6 in every single one of these equations below, they're all true equations. Remember, we had those conditional equations true equations, false equations. Look at the second one. 6 plus 3 equals 9, true. 6 minus 3 equals 3, true. 3 times 6 equals 18, true. Okay, 6 divided by 3 equals 2, true. Okay. So there's a trick to doing equations, and once you get this, you'll, you'll have no problem with it. By the way, um, when I took algebra for the first time, I struggled with equations and certain things like that. I couldn't quite get it. I finally did, but it took me longer than normal. So if it takes you a little longer than normal, it takes you a lot of lessons, you have to keep going back and figuring stuff out, don't worry about it. Everybody learns stuff at different speeds. You're better at maybe English or... Um, uh, you know, or volleyball, or uh, you know, history, or I'm trying to think, what do homeschoolers do? Raising goats than somebody else in math. Don't worry about it. Okay, so you'll get it. Just keep practicing. That's the Saxon method, and it works. So uh, these are easy to solve. These equations there, but they get a little there. That looks better, more interesting than this. So let's take a look at them. I want you to write this down, or at least like a shortened version of this for your notes. Make sure you're still keeping your notes with a little notebook paper with a 39 in the, in the right top corner. Okay, so write this down. This is called the addition subtraction rule for equations. It's a piece of cake, all right? So here it is. Number one, you can pause this in a second if you want. The same number can be added to both sides of an equation without changing the solution to the equation. So give it a second, write that down, pause it. Okay, in other words, if you have some equation, I mean, I don't know, let's just make up one. Um, 5 plus, I don't know, 6 equals 11, right? That's a true equation, right? Well, let's just add a, add a 2. 2 plus 5 plus 6 equals, oh, but we need to do the same thing. So we'll add a 2 over here as well. So we just did this, right? We did 2 plus plus 2, same thing, right? 2 plus 5 plus 6 is 13, right? The right side, 11 plus 2 is 13. Well, that's also true, right? So that works. If you add some number to both sides of an equation, it's still going to be true if the original equation was true. Okay? The second part of this will be this. The same number can be subtracted from both sides of an equation without changing the solution to the equation. All right, pause it for a second and write that down. Okay, in other words, look. If you have, I don't know, 9 plus 3 equals 12. That's a true equation, right? If Let's just change it. Let's put 9 plus 3 minus 5 equals 12 minus 5. As long as we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, it's, it's the same, right? It's like having a seesaw and you have like seesaws are toys that your parents and grandparents used to play on and they would okay just ask them about it if you have exactly the same weight like if you're like this and there's a seesaw and there's exactly the same weight all these kids on this side and all these kids on this side and then that's just going to balance right but if you add some big kid right here he's really big then obviously it's going to go bam and push them real down. Unless you get another kid with the same weight and he's doing the same thing, pushing the other side down. It's the same thing here. So that's how we solve equations. You look at some equation like this, and you can copy this down. Go ahead and copy that down. X minus 3 equals 7. Okay. And you go, well, I mean, I don't know what the answer to that is off my top of my mind. You might think, oh, I know the answer. It's 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. And you're right. That is correct. What your job is going to be for the next, I mean, years, really, um, with no break, your life is over from now on. It's completely over. Your job is going to be to get this X by itself. 
whatever you have to do to the junk by the X or multiplied by the X, you have to undo it. You have to get it out of there. So you have nothing except for this X. That is all. Okay. So you have a minus three right sitting there next to the X, correct? To undo the minus three, you have a negative three by it, basically. To undo that, you're going to have to add three. Because if you have an X there, look at this. If you have an X, right? You have a negative three, right? And you have a positive three, correct? You're going to have to, uh, really, these two are opposites, right? They undo each other. So you have a zero there. And an X and a zero, and there's, I'm, you've got it. You're gonna, you, can, you can say, oh, I found it. X equals whatever, because that's all you have there. This is gone now. That's a zero. You don't have to say X equals X plus this or whatever. It's gone. But remember the rule, like the seesaw. If you add three to one side of an equation, you have to add three to the other side of an equation. Now, you can do it like this across, or you can go like down like this, you know, so you're doing an addition problem like this, seven, you know, whatever, that's fine. Well, just look here. You have the X on here, the negative three and the positive three, they cancel out. You have seven plus three on the right side, so you've just solved an equation. X is equal to 10. You can always check your answer if you want to by sticking this 10 or the answer back into the original equation and seeing if it's a true equation. Let's see here. 10 minus three is equal to seven. Yep, true equation. There we go, that's all there is to it. Let's try another one. In plus three is equal to seven. In plus three equals seven. Go ahead and copy that down. All right, well, we want to get rid of this three. Don't want it. So we're gonna subtract it. We want it gone. But this is an equation, right? That's an equal sign, which means everything over here is the same as everything over here. So if you can't just go around doing something to one side of the seesaw or the equation, right? Okay, so you do the same thing over here. And now you have subtracted that three, there's nothing left. You get an N left, that's it. But over here, you have subtracted three from seven, which gives you four, and that solves it for you there, right there. That's all there is to it. You can check it if you want to. Put it back in there, four plus three equals seven. Yep, that works, got it, okay. There you go, all right. Now let's try this one, copy this down. Give yourself a second, go ahead and pause it. Okay, this is not complicated. You simply do exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter if there are fractions. We have a method of solving things, right? If we have a method of doing things and it works, we just keep doing it. We don't care what, if things look a little different, we still use the method, right? And the method is, we don't want three-fourths by the Y. We don't want anything by it. We just want a Y. So to get rid of the three-fourths, we're gonna subtract three-fourths from this side. We're gonna go, okay, minus three-fourths from over here. But remember, this is an equation. So whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side, okay? So this goes away, and you just have a y left. Over here, we have 9 elevenths minus 3 fourths. And we haven't forgotten how to find common denominators and, you know, subtract and add fractions of different denominators. That's still the same thing. It's still going to be the same way to doing it. It's going to be a 44. 11 times 4, so 9 times 4 is here. 4 times 11, so 3 times 11. 37 minus 30, oh, I got it, 3 fourths There we go, got our answer. That's all there is to it. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you gotta do the exact same thing to the other side of an equation, or else it's not an equation, or else it's not equal. Okay, all right, try this one. Pause it and try it yourself. Okay, well, we have a, so we've subtracted 3 fifths from this side of the equation. We don't want that, we want nothing. So we're gonna do the exact opposite. We're gonna add 3 fifths. And of course, we're gonna to go to this side of the equation and add 3 fifths as well. So this goes away. We just have our Z there. It doesn't matter what letters you use. There's tons of letters. There's a couple of them we don't use for certain reasons, but we'll, you'll come to that later. Okay, so now we have a new, uh, a new right side of the equation, right? One, uh, one tenth plus 3 fifths. Well, that's a piece of cake. One tenth is one tenth. 3 fifths is 6 tenths, so we have z is equal to 
seven tenths, and there we go. All right. Try the practice problems on page 129. See how you get. Try A and B first, then come back. Or you could just try A, whatever. Okay, well, let's take a look. The method is to subtract a four on the left side to, have to clear it out so we have nothing but A. And of course, it's an equation, so we do exactly the same thing to the right side. So we just have A left. And on the right, we have six minus four, which is two. You can check it. Two plus four is equal to six. Yep, that works, all right? Pause it and try B. Okay, B, we have a, we're subtracting two, so we don't want that. We want a zero, so we're gonna add two, the opposite, to get rid of that. So we're gonna add two to this side as well. So we have X is equal to four plus two, which is six. That's our equation. Okay, let's check it. Six minus two, is that four? Yep, works. Okay, pause it and try C now. Okay, well, again, same thing here. We want to get rid of this one half sitting there, so we're gonna subtract it. And of course, we'll do the same thing to the right side as well. So we know that that goes away, and that's an X. And this will be three fourths. We could probably do this in our heads, right? Three fourths minus two fourths, right? Will be one fourth. There you go, okay, pause it and try D. Okay, we have minus one-third. We don't want that. We want zero. We're going to add one-third to clean things up and even it all out. And we'll do the same thing to the right side. Gone. Y is equal to 11 twelfths plus one-third. Let's just go ahead and we can do that in our heads, right? One-third is four twelfths. So that's going to be 15 twelfths, which is one and three twelfths which is the same thing as one and one fourth. Here we go, okay. All right, you'll have several of those type of questions in your uh, problem set today. And try those, if you don't get it, look at your solutions manual, see the steps, and uh, after a while, it'll start clicking. So, all right, good luck, do your best today, see ya.